You want to find that drive and focus that has you locked in and on fire every single day? My book, The Mirror Motivation, will do it for you. I bought a copy for you. You take care of the shipping. The book is free. Click the link down there. I got you. Straightallday.com. Straightallday.com. Let me start off by saying I'm completely neutral when it comes to politics. I don't claim a party. I'm not pro or anti any political, any particular person politically. I think all politicians are liars in general. So, and I don't really, to me, nothing that any of them is doing or saying has any effect on my day-to-day -day life. And I know there are arguments for and against that. I'm not here to talk about that. What I was thinking about here today is a guy like uh, Donald Trump, who's the president, right? And this is not really about politics. It is, but it's not. And I'll explain exactly what I mean. Donald Trump has a book called Think Big and Kick Ass. I don't know if you ever read it. He changed, they changed the title to just Think Big. He left the kick ass part out. I don't know why. But anyway, I read that book. I read a couple of Donald Trump's books. I don't remember when I read this particular one, but I have it. And I was just re-looking over it. And I remember I, I, it was funny to me, but um, very fitting. And actually, I think very uh, practical. He has a chapter in his book. If you never read that book, there's a chapter in the book called Revenge. That's the title of the chapter, Revenge. And the whole chapter, Donald Trump goes in on some people who he got revenge on, some people he doesn't like, some people who have attacked him. He attacked them in his book. And he goes through this whole chapter. It's a pretty lengthy chapter explaining to the reader why if someone attacks you, you need to attack them back. If somebody tries to screw you, screw them back 10 times worse so that they never attack you again. You need to be the type of person who always gets revenge on people who come at you. He did a whole chapter in his book on this. He's owning this concept and this idea. And it made me laugh when I read it, but when I, as I read through it, for the most part, I was like, you know what? He's actually, he's actually right. I didn't just read this book. I read it a couple years ago, but I re-looked at it before I recorded this. And it got me to thinking this. The thing about uh, Trump, and it seemed, and I can't get away from these conversations, even though I don't even pay any attention to politics. I don't watch MSNBC. I don't follow any political people, nobody. But this stuff just finds you because everybody's talking about it and everybody knows who Trump is. That's why this is a good topic. And oh yeah, just in case people don't know me, my expertise is about what people do and the mindsets behind what they do. And that's why I'm talking about this, not because I'm getting into the political space, but again, I see people like ganging up trying to attack Trump. There's like, there was recently, I heard in the news, they was on the Gayle King show, the four women who are congresswomen. I hope I got that right. Four politicians, let's just say that. Four women who became like, they called them the squad and they are trying to gather up some support to go at Trump because they believe he's you no know, anti-female, he's anti anybody other than white people that and there are plenty of arguments to support that and again i'm not making that point i'm not going against that point but just to say that that squad exists and there have been plenty of other people over the last what five years it's 2019 i'm recording this trump started campaigning in 2015 so there have been plenty of people over the last four or five years who have said plenty of things about trump and joined forces together and it seems like there's a whole group of people going against this guy but here's the thing that I was thinking, anybody, because people like to say over and over again, they like to point out these things about Trump. They say he's a bigot, he's racist, he's misogynistic, he's in a whole other list of things about Trump, right? And this is what I'm thinking to myself. Whenever I hear people saying these things over and over again on social media, has anybody changed their mind about the guy since 2015 when he started his presidential campaign? Has anyone changed their position on the guy from pro to anti or from anti to pro? I don't think anyone has. I think if you're the type of person who didn't like Trump when he first started running, you still don't like him then. And if you liked him when he first started campaigning, you still like him then. I don't think anyone's changed their mind. So what concerns me or what I'm trying to figure out, and maybe some of you can answer this question is, why do people keep saying the same things about this guy, especially the people who are against him? Because I guess based on my, I don't, based on my demographic and the people who I know and follow, I hear and see more people who are, I guess, on the anti side than on the pro side, for whatever reason. You can draw your own conclusions to that. But I hear people, they say it over and over. It's like they keep repeating these things. I'm like, yo, whose mind are you changing? 
because it is, is a clear line between whether you like them or you don't. There was somebody like, let's say Obama, you know, people could kind of vacillate and you can kind of be in the middle with him because you could like some things, not like other things. With Trump, there's, there's no gray. It's like you either on this side of the room or you on that side of the room. I happen to not be on either side of the room, but people who have an opinion have a strong one when it comes to that man. And what I'm trying to figure out is why or what people believe they're achieving when they keep saying the same things when nobody is in the grave with this guy. Everybody already understands what they feel. So here's the thing. And going back to the point that I made at the beginning, Trump is into revenge. Trump is into, look, a whole bunch of people want to come at me and you want to try to attack me and say bad things about me. Okay, this is his game. This is his sport. And a good analogy, not analogy, but a good, uh, I don't even know what to call it. But you know the saying that people say, don't mud wrestle with a pig because the pig, because you get, you both get dirty and the pig likes it. I'm not saying that Donald Trump's a pig. I'm not saying, again, nothing. This is a completely neutral conversation that I'm having here. But the saying, everybody knows that saying, right? This is his game. What he, he likes when people attack him. He likes when people come at him. He likes when people combat him. He likes when people try to drum up support against him because this is his sport. He's really good at this. And therefore, if people keep trying to do this and attack him this way and you know, let's team up, let's make a squad, let's drum up support against this dude, I don't think it's going to work <laughs> because this is his game. This is what he's good at. And I haven't seen anyone emerge from the other side of the conversation who appears to be strong enough to beat him at this game because he's so good at this that playing him at this game is probably is just bad strategy. I think it's really bad strategy overall. Now, here's the thing, as we relate this to sports, because my I played professional basketball for, I play, I play sports, so it don't even matter when. <laughs> Kobe Bryant has this TV show on ESPN Plus called Detail. I don't know if any of you have ever seen it, where he basically goes over game film and he's breaking it down. And I thought it wouldn't be that interesting because I'm like, people have been breaking down game film forever. What's so crazy? What's so interesting about Kobe doing it? But he actually has some insights that I haven't heard from anyone else. He has really good insight. And it was one game he was breaking down. It was the Western Conference Finals from like 10 years ago. The Lakers were playing against the Denver Nuggets. And early in the game, it was the first quarter of the game, Kobe was trying to post up Carmelo Anthony. And Melo, this is when Melo was in, on Denver. And Carmelo Anthony's a little bit bigger than Kobe. He's a little bit heavier than him, a little bit taller than Kobe. And Kobe was trying to post up Melo and a foul got called and then it, the ball goes out of bounds or whatever, the ref blows a whistle. And Kobe is showing this part in slow motion. He showed it and then he rewinded and showed it in slow motion. And what you see is when that foul gets called, Carmelo's like, yeah, yeah. Melo's getting into it, even though he got called for a foul. And Kobe says, you notice that? This is what he points out. He said, notice that Melo, he likes this. Like, he likes when it's a physical thing and we get to throw our bodies around and we just see who's stronger, who's tougher down in the post. This is what Melo really likes doing. So here's what I'm going to do. And this is, this is Kobe talking. He says, I'm not going to take him in the post anymore because this is what he likes. So you know what I'm going to do for the rest of the game? And Kobe, luckily, not luckily, but he had the skill to do this. He said, for the rest of the game, I'm not going to try to post up Melo since he likes battling in the post. I'm going to take him out on the perimeter where he has to move his feet and be more quick and more shifty. And I will see if he likes that because I know he loves it down here. He doesn't like it out there as much. So I'm going to take him into terrain that he's not so comfortable on, that he doesn't like so much. And I'm going to make him play that game. And that gives me more of an advantage. This is, again, Kobe speaking. I could play on the outside and I could play on the inside. Melo, I think he's way better, much better playing on the inside in that battling area than he is on the outside where he has to move his feet on the perimeter and use his quickness because I got more quickness in him. I think I'm better on the perimeter than he is by a lot. It may be a battle down in the paint, but I got the huge advantage out here. So I'm going to take him out here where he's uncomfortable and that's how I'm going to beat him. See, Kobe was thinking strategically and that's how you had to attack. I think anyone in life, any one of you who's watching this, any situation you get in where you're trying to beat an opponent, you have a clearly defined opponent, the worst thing you can do is play into their hands. Play them at a game that they're really good at, a game that they like, and a game that they've been successful at many times already. I think, I mean, at least according to Trump in his own damn book, he's been really good at getting revenge. He's been really good at retaliating. He's really good at somebody attack me, I attack him back and I win. I mean, he did win the fucking election. Whether However you feel about that, he won. 
This is his sport. So if you keep trying to beat him at his sport, you're gonna lose. Marianne Williamson, who's an author that a lot of people didn't really know much about her, but she got into the first, the first democratic debates of 2019. And people were kind of like making tongue in cheek jokes about her after the first debate. She says, she had one statement where she said, look, I'm gonna meet Donald Trump in the square. And she was basically projecting that she's gonna win the democratic nomination. I'm gonna meet Donald Trump. And since he preaches all this fear and hate and negative stuff, I'm gonna bring love, and when love goes against hate, excuse me, goes against hate and fear, love is gonna win. And again, people are making tongue in cheek jokes about this, but she actually has, she's on the right track. She has the right idea strategically, which is don't try to beat him at his own game. All these people trying to beat him at his own game, like talking bad about him, trying to make a nickname for him, trying to attack him, trying to point out all these negative things about him or reinforce whatever ideas that his non-supporters or his detractors have about him is not going to work because nobody's better at him than it than he is none of the democratic people who i've heard of and again i do not follow politics that closely i probably couldn't even name five people who are running for the democratic nomination right now but none of them is better at the the mud slinging name calling attacking strategy none of them is anywhere not even half as good at it as donald trump is but they're trying to do it. They're trying to use that to beat him. You're not going to win. You're going to lose. It's like trying to, it was like if I was, if I was playing one-on-one -on -one against, let's not say one-on-one. -on -one. Let's say I was in a five-on-five -five game and I'm guarding no Shaq. It could be one-on-one. -on -one. I'm going one-on-one -on -one against Shaq, Shaquille O'Neal. Would it be smart of me to try to make it a, let's see who's stronger, try to bang bodies with him and let's see if I can out-muscle him? No, I'm probably going to lose. Why? Because dude's like, 150 pounds heavier than me he's taller than me and his strength is playing around the basket it would be stupid of me to try to beat him at that game because that's what he's good at if i'm gonna beat shaq in a game of basketball the only chance i have is to get him away from the basket and make it a perimeter based game where i could use my quickness i could use an outside shot and then hopefully on defense i don't know i don't know what i'm gonna do on defense that's the that's the point that i'm making you don't want to don't play people at the game that they're good at or the game that they enjoy. When you see somebody is really good at a certain way of playing or they really enjoy playing a certain way, the last thing you do is get into that kind of game with them because that's how they're going to win. That's what they're good at. And unless unless you're just going to go strength against strength and you feel your strength is better than their strength. OK, then let's see. We'll find out. But if you are thinking strategically and you're, you want to be economical with your energy, with your time, with your resources, the smartest thing is to have other abilities, other skills, and bring them on some terrain that they're not familiar with. Sun Tzu said in The Art of War, when you know your enemy, you know the terrain, you will be in 100 wars, you will never be in peril. In 100 battles, you'll never be in peril. So you want to bring the enemy into a space where they don't, maybe don't know the opponent, they don't know the terrain, they have no idea what's going on, they're uncomfortable, they're unsettled, that's how you can beat them. But if you play, if you go against an opponent in an arena in which they're comfortable with everything around them, and Trump is really comfortable with this back and forth mudslinging shit, that's where they're comfortable. Even if you can beat him at it, take him somewhere where he's not comfortable, like Marianne Williams said. Marianne Williamson said, love. That's something that he never talks about. <laughs> he never brings that up. He never brags about it. He brags about attacking people and beating them. He's done it over and over again. I don't even follow the dude on social media, but I've seen it. So I know if you follow this stuff, you've seen it. Don't play him at that game. You always want to take your opponent into something in which they're uncomfortable so you can beat them. Again, this is the height of strategic thinking. The problem that I've seen, again, in a little bit that I've seen of politics, and it, nobody can get away from it these days, is people are getting way too emotional and trying to attack Trump. You can't beat him that way. Because the thing is, when people get emotional, that's the opposite of being strategic. Strategy goes out the window when people get emotional. Like I can have a strategy of playing Shaq, right? One-on-one, -on -one. my strategy is, all right, stay on the perimeter, shoot jump shots, use your quickness, use the fact that he won't come away from the basket and just make your jump shots. But let's say the first play of the game, Shaq gets the ball and he backs me down, throws me under the basket and then just dunks on me and says, yeah, bitch, you're too small, you're too weak, you ain't strong enough. So now I allow my emotions to take over. I stop being strategic and now what do I do? I'm like, oh, fuck that. He said, I'm too weak. Fuck that. I'm going to show him that I'm not weak. Now I try to back him down. Now my strategy just went out the window and I'm probably going to end up losing that game. That's what I see people doing this is a microcosm example, but that's what I see people doing when they're trying to deal with Trump. 
He loves revenge. He loves retaliation. He loves attacking. Don't play that game. Do the exact opposite. And that requires people to control their emotions. So when he attacks somebody, or when he says something or does something that offends you or bothers you or reinforces the opinion you already had of him, don't respond. Don't react to it. And this is what he's been good at. This is what how he has taken over social media. He gets people to react to him. He gets people to get these visceral reactions and get emotional and go back and forth. I mean, obviously, I'm sure he notices that, that that's what's happening, but he keeps doing it. You think that maybe there's some strategy behind it. And here's another problem. Anybody who's watching this or has thought of these, or heard these same concepts from somebody else, maybe. They're incapable of admitting that this guy might just be a little bit smart, that he might have a little bit of strategy behind what he's doing because people dislike him so much that they can't give him credit for anything. They can't even say, you know what? Maybe this guy is a little bit strategic and maybe he's playing his strategy against me or us. And maybe that's why he's you no, know, maybe that's why things are working for him. That's why he has such strong support. Maybe, just maybe, but people aren't willing to even admit that because they dislike him so much that they're not even willing to give him credit that, you know what, maybe he has some idea what he's doing. Maybe there's a method to his madness. Here's the other thing. I'll make this the last point. Every time, as I said at the beginning of this video, anybody who loved Trump before he got elected, like when he first started campaigning, still love him now. And anybody who hated him still hates him now. <laughs> and every time the people who don't like him attack him, the anti-Trump people attack Trump. You know what happens? The people who like him, they get even stronger in their support of him because now you created an us versus them dynamic. And the us versus them dynamic is a very strong factor in creating a movement or a creating a, a cult following is to have something to oppose you. When you have people attacking you and going against you and every single day saying negative things about you, the group bonds. They get stronger over the fact that that conflict exists. If any of you read any books on marketing or storytelling or you study Hollywood movies, you know that the main thing that makes the audience come to love and bond with any character is the fact that there's some conflict, there's some attack. And when you can clearly identify where the conflict is coming from, specifically if it's a person, our, our attackers are these people right here, and we're here together, but these people are trying to attack us and go against us, we get stronger together and we get even more staunch in our support of whatever the, the character is or whoever that hero is supposed to be. Trump's the hero for the people who are the, the MAGA people. And again, I'm not anti or pro either side, but the people who are on that side, the MAGA side, every time you attack Trump, they get stronger in their supporter to do. <laughs> so again, if you wanna break up his support, or you want to beat him at a game that he's not good at, the first thing people got to stop doing is stop getting so emotional. Stop trying to attack him and stop trying to play his game. You can't win. You can't beat him at his game. <laughs> you can't beat Shaq in a battle of throwing elbows and bodying people up in the paint. You're going to lose. You know, the smartest person to play against Shaq was Vlade Divac because he would, he would flop and try to draw offensive fouls on Shaq. And he got Shaq fouled out a couple of times. They didn't beat him, but he at least had Shaq thinking about how he was gonna make his moves. Whereas everybody else tried to go body for body with Shaq, you ain't gonna win. And Shaq kicked everybody's ass, as you, as you saw, at least during his heyday. But you get the point that I'm making here. So that's enough of me talking politics. That's all I know. And I'm not even talking politics. So anybody who takes this as me talking politics, you're being emotional. That's the exact fucking point. So be able to detach your feelings from what strategically works. And that's something that a lot of people are incapable of doing in life, let alone in, in politics, business, sports, whatever. Detaching, all right, this is how I feel emotionally, but this is what's actually working and here's what's not working. You gotta be able to separate the two because they're often not the same. But again, not everybody wants to think. Most people just want the information handed to them. That's that, that's all I got to say on that topic. We'll see, hopefully we get an interesting, interesting uh, competition in the 2020 election. Right now, as the date of I'm recording this, I don't think it's gonna be an interesting camp. I don't think it's gonna be an interesting battle. I think it's gonna be a, uh, right now, if you don't like Trump, it's not looking good. Let's put it that way. <laughs> if you like him, it's looking good because who's gonna beat him? I don't see a formidable candidate, but maybe I'm wrong, we'll see. And I don't know shit about politics, so maybe I'm, I could really be wrong. Work on your game, DreAllDay.com.